Hey, what's up? It's Mark from MR3 Media, and this is Doing Business with Mark Randall the Third. That is me. <laughs> hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode. I am so glad you're tuning in with me. Uh, once again, I am in the fields grinding. Today has been a busy week. Busy, 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 busy. Um, I've actually been um, working a little bit of my side hustle a lot this week and not putting as much time in my business. But um, sometimes you have to do that. And I, I, I wouldn't even mind actually covering that in a future podcast episode. If you're um, interested in hearing my opinion on um, having a side hustle while being an entrepreneur, I think, um, yeah, well, we could say that for another episode. But yeah, but this week was an extremely busy, 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 busy week for your boy. Um, and yeah. So um, today I want to talk about fear. Um, I think fear is prevalent in all forms of um, entrepreneurship and business and in life in general. Um, You have various versions of fears. Fears takes on um, many faces, you know, codes and creeds. It looks different um, to everyone. You know, when I was a kid, the things that scared, you know, the bejesus out of me then uh, definitely don't scare me now. And the things that scare me as an adult, I'm pretty sure my young brain just wouldn't understand why. So uh, without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into this subject. We're going to talk about fear. But as always, before we get started, I want to make sure you hydrate. Yes, water is life. Okay, so I got my trusty notebook. Um, and let's dig into this today. We're going to be talking about two different types of fear that, I mean, I think there's various, various, various versions of fear. Um, as an adult, let's actually, let's rewind it back a little bit further and talk about just how we're made to handle being afraid. Uh, I think, um, as men in America, you're supposed to conquer your fears. That's just the kind of the way it is. It's just the way you're supposed to brought up. You're not supposed to be afraid of anything. And I think especially being a black man in America, uh, we have more fears than I, I don't want to say most, but um, I think our fears are a little bit more um, harder to conquer because um, we can't change those systems that, you know, scare the hell out of us. <laughs> so, um with that, you know, there's various, various different fears in adulthood. Um, and then when you start getting into starting a business, um, you get even more fears. And a lot of people like before they start the business, the fear of starting a business will keep them from actually uh, going out and launching um, their new venture. Um, and I want to talk about very specifically two types of fear that I personally have dealt with and have somewhat overcome. I guess you could say I've overcome it at at the moment because I'm currently here um, speaking to you about it and talking to you about it. But honestly, it's it's always a work in progress. You're always going to be working through your fears. It's just kind of the nature of the beast. So um, the first the two fears we're going to talk about today is uh, fear of failing and fear of success. Uh, The second one. I think it's a little bit more nuanced fear of failing obviously makes sense. So with, um, with me starting my current venture, I think the fear of failing, um, was lingering deep within my brain. Um, I've have a weird relationship with failure. Um, I definitely embrace it. Um, I think being an entrepreneur, you fail, uh, so often, and I'm actually a part of a network of entrepreneurs who, um, talk about you know their failures in business called the resiliency frequency. Uh, you can check them. You can check us out. We've done um, webinars talking about being resilient through failure and all of that. And uh, me personally, with my with as I've gotten older, I've had several failed ventures. I've had several failed businesses, and each failure has taught me something, and the bounce back time has shortened. So why would this particular venture, my media, my video marketing company, um, create fear of failure within me? And I think at this point, it's just like I feel like I've 
I feel like this is the move. Like this is the business. This is the company that is going to take me to like the next level, the next pinnacle of where I'm trying to be as an entrepreneur. And the fear of failing came in the aspect of maybe I'm just not good at entrepreneurship. Maybe I'm just not good at creating a business. And it's hard to overcome, you know, those type of fears. And you end up getting what I like to call um, stuck in, um, you get um, paralysis by research. Um, You just research your topic over and over and over again. You're constantly looking things up. You're constantly rephrasing how to structure things. You're overanalyzing, overthinking what you're going to do, how you're going to do it to the point where you spend so much time researching that sometimes things change, which then makes you re-research. So if you had actually started your business already, you would be like pivoting through these moments. But instead, since you haven't started your business, it's like, well, this is now changed. So I have to scrap this section of the business I was going to form and now readdress it. Where if you have started your business, you would just, you know, move accordingly because you're in the nature of the beast, you're in the field. And um, when you're in the field, you know, you have to um, assess the situation, um, adapt and act. Um, so the next fear for me is failure, f- fear of success, which is kind of I would I would put this more into anxiety versus fear. But for the sake for the sake of this conversation, we're going to just lump it in with fear. Um, fear your fear of success really trickles down to being able to do it again. You know, like everyone thinks like lightning won't strike twice are you a flash in the pan or do you really have what it takes to succeed like are you um are you a fluke and i think that's where the failure of success of (laughs) the failure of success really 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 stems from is um the longevity of it the everyday grind of it every day you have to keep proving to yourself that you when you have success, that you can maintain success. Um, The world is full of, and the industries, there's tons of stories of people who have momentary success and then it's catastrophic failure. And I think that when you have success, you have more people looking at you, you know, and more eyes on you. And contrary to a lot of people's belief who who may not be trying to do things doing anything is difficult i'll tell that to everyone like starting and blazing any type of trail or starting a new venture is extremely difficult and that's why a lot of people don't do it and i think the people who don't do it sometimes look for a reason for you to fail and if you don't fail and you succeed then the pressure becomes even more um compressed it becomes um even more palatable because it's like they're just waiting for you to fail and it can be difficult because when if you do stumble if you do fall back i'm pretty sure there won't be a shortage of people who will tell you i told you so you know it just took some time or you couldn't maintain or it was just a flash in the pan um so those two types of fears currently um they're 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 definitely ones that i deal with so not to tell you how to diagnose your fear, how to overcome your fear, how to the difference between fear and anxiety, you know, because they both sound different. They both give you similar feelings in your body, but they're kind of caused by two different things where anxiety is more of a mental thing and fear is supposedly more of an external thing. Um, but truth be told, the lines are pretty blurry uh, depending on who you are and how you're handling it. So. Um, this is how I generally have been able to deal with those two very particular types of fear and kind of just fear in general, like how I handle, um, any situation where I'm feeling fearful, um, and whatnot. So the first thing that I do to overcome my fear is giving no fucks. Very, very simple. Very, very simple. It, 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 it may sound crass or it may sound like that's not um a method you can use but honestly just not caring frees you up 
to succeed, it frees you up to fail. It's very difficult. It's a double edged. It's a double edged sword. Um, you can uh, not care enough to where you don't succeed, which is like the opposite end of what you're trying to do. Or you can like not care enough to succeed. But either way, just taking some of the burden of the fear of um, failure off of you and just not caring if you fail, you're going to get up and you're going to do it again. I always like to think to myself, and this is something I ask myself whenever I'm feeling the fear, whenever I'm in that meeting and my and my chest gets tense and I'm, I'm, I'm about to stumble over some words, I take a minute, I breathe, and I say, what's the worst that can happen? If I'm about to go into an interview with someone important, I'm about to close a deal, I'm about to hop on the phone, anytime I'm confronting any type of fear where I am pushed outside of my comfort zone and I get that tenseness where I want to just stop i don't even want to run i just want to stop and shrink and just disappear i just think to myself like what's the worst that can happen what is the absolute worst thing that can happen well some people would say like the worst thing that can happen is they reject you i say nah the worst thing that happened is you die <laughs> i always go to like the like the like the most extreme of the situation worst case scenario a meteor crashed through this building and we die. Well, I guess I don't have to worry about that problem any longer because I'm dead. So if the worst case scenario is death and the best case scenario is success, then I should just go for it, you know, because even in the worst case scenario, the outcome of the scenario no longer matters. So that's pretty much the, the, the split second thought process that goes through my mind whenever I'm dealing with anything uncomfortable to the point where I feel like I can't um, function, I can't move, I can't breathe. Um, it's even how I, I managed to deal with um, my anxiety. Slightly different with anxiety. I do um, what's the worst that can happen. And also um, I constantly move forward while I have this thought. So as I'm thinking, what's the worst that can happen? I'm still progressing toward that goal i'm in the car driving i am i'm talking i'm walking toward the rooms I, i'm talking to the people like people are expecting me like constant motion toward the goal while also thinking worst case scenario i just fuck it up and i'm okay with that i am i like you you just have to become okay with that um and I know that that may not be very helpful for you, but if it is helpful for you and um, you are able to, you know, use this little bit of uh, this little bit of juice in your next time you're, you're overcoming some fear of that of that um, caliber, uh, then, yeah, you're welcome, I guess. All right. So um, failure of success, how I handle this one is kind of nuanced, because with me, particularly my main failure with my fear of success, uh, I think I just said failure of success, fear of success. Have I been saying that the whole entire time? Oh, that's going to be an interesting podcast if I have. Um, my main fear of success is um, what usually happens is I get tired. Um, I lose the drive or I forget what was the assignment. I like something happens and I just like the 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 the, the need to keep um, the success going becomes overwhelming and I kind of lose place. I kind of lose touch. So what I do is I journal. Uh, I am a avid journaler. Um, I have my notebooks. They're all around all the time. I have several notebooks. I write affirmations. I write daily journals. Um, I write things in um, my notes. I am constantly, constantly, constantly writing down how I'm feeling what are my goals? What am I doing? And why am I doing it? And the reason I do this is when things get tough and I get to those points where I feel like either I'm not moving forward or I'm um, or I don't understand like the point of what I'm doing. Whenever I feel like I've been detached from the situation, I go back and I read my mindset a couple months ago or I read my mindset before I found whatever success that I am claiming that to have. And it brings me back to that place. I remember those thoughts. I remember writing it down. I remember how that feels and it centers me. And it brings me back to the point where I am refocused, re-energized to attack the situation and handle it the best way possible. 
Um, I do bullet journaling. Um, if that's something you've heard of, you can look it up on YouTube. If you're interested in seeing what my journal looks like or how I journal, um, please comment below and I will, you know, let you guys know, take a look, see at it. Um, I do a combination of bullet journaling and future journaling. So future journaling is um, journaling to write, um, to kind of change yourself, kind of like rewire, re hardwire your brain. Um, and bullet journaling is um, a way to journal very fast. So um, it's a very structured way of journaling. It's like a lot of to do's and things of that caliber. So I can go back while seeing this and I, and while I'd say I journal avidly, I'm not a slave to the journal. I, I, I miss days. I'll miss days. I'll miss weeks. I'll miss months. But the concept is still there of there's some documentation happening somewhere on some platform for me that I can always go back to. My, um, my actual journal, um, when I do go through those periods of time when I like skip some days and I go back and I'm reading through it it does have this ability to transport you wherever um wherever you were when, when you wrote it and it's a and it's a great way to recenter you it's a great way to bring you back to focus it's a great way to get you back on track so you can overcome this fear of success i'm not really sure if that will help you with your fear of success let me know uh whatever you guys do to handle your fears um i'm super interested I always want to know how I can do better, um, be better. Uh, that's, that's this whole game of life, man, is is everyone's just trying to, you know, leave, leave, a, leave it a little bit better than we came in at it. And uh, just to be the best person possible, because no one wants to be like, I want to be the worst person possible. Like, who are you? That's not cool. That's not that's not the move. So, yeah, um, I guess that wraps it up for me on this one, dealing with some fears. Uh, I think what I might start doing in the future is um, putting the topics in Instagram polls because I was going in between this one and the job, um, just the entrepreneurial side hustle and how I think they're important and which one to do. But um, this week, as I was working on my side hustle, there was moments of um, fear. I have uh, so much fear before I start new projects, um, before I meet new people. Um, whenever I'm doing something that I haven't done before, um, doing anything for the first time, and I was doing something outside of my comfort zone uh, with this um, part time, with this 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 part time hustle. And there's fear. There was moments when I was in my car and I was just like, I'll just call in. I'll just tell them that I was sick. I'll just tell them that my car broke down. I'll just tell them that my camera stopped working. And I thought, well what's the worst that can happen you know and with that and moving forward you know it wasn't that bad it was a, it was it was a little crappy i'm not going to front to you it was a pretty rough day but um i made it to through the end and i'm stronger for it and just like um the quote from uh an old old i think I, that that should be my thing is like give quotes from old shows and old um cinema from like you know back in the day but an old quote from um eon flux uh for all my liquid tv fans out there my old mtv fans where is i want my mtv um whatever doesn't kill you makes you stranger <laughs> so go out there and be strange be strange gain some wins uh let me know how your week is going let me know how your business is going I'm interested. I want to know about your journey. If any of this is helping you, if it's not helping you, if you think I'm coming at this all wrong, I am sorry, but it works for me. So I'm going to keep doing it. <laughs> all right. So I guess that does it for us for this week of doing business with Mark Randall the third. Please tune back in uh, next week um, and we'll have more and more for you. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Mark Randall 3 rd uh, I'll probably put that into the show notes. Also, hit me up on LinkedIn. That's where grown people congregate. I don't know if you're utilizing LinkedIn. I am on LinkedIn, hella. Not as much as I should be. I should be on LinkedIn a little bit more. Uh, keeping it honest, I, 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 I plan to be on LinkedIn a lot more than I am. But uh, if you are one of those people who hang out on LinkedIn, if you're over Facebook, your auntie jumping in your feed or you're over Instagram, just, you know, getting fun over lives that will never exist for you. Hop on LinkedIn. You know, you can go viral for like five or ten likes. It's, 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 it's fun. It's a good time over there. All right. So that does it for me uh, for this episode of 
doing business with Mark Randall. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, get home safe. <laughs>